January 13th, the world watched as GM unveiled the new Corvette Stingray Coupe. Now, less than two months later, they've dropped the top to reveal the Stingray convertible. GM design director Tom Peters takes us around the latest version of the Stingray. Over the course of Corvette's history, the convertible has always been an integral part of the Corvette and Stingray statement. Probably more than all the Corvette programs I've been involved with, they've run concurrently right from day one. It wasn't like you designed the uh, sporty coupe first and it's like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do for a convertible? It's, it's, it's given a lot of thought, a lot of care, and a lot of study from day one. Underneath it, it's, it's meant to be uh, open-air motoring or convertible. The structure is, takes that into consideration. The proportions, you, you know, the shape of the windshield for sure, and then the balance of the car as well for performance dynamics. It has a very raked windshield. Is that the same rake as the coupe? Yes, the same, same uh, parts go into the windshield as the, the coupe, they're, they're shared. The appearance, however, when you look at design-wise, having the top removed affects the proportion of the car, the overall profile. The top is powered. There's no more manual option. Did you radically change the look of the top for this car? From, again, from a design standpoint and aesthetic standpoint, you want the vehicle to look outstanding when it's, when it's stowed, but you also want to look, make it look fantastic and well thought out mm -hmm. and beautiful when the top is up. We paid particular attention to uh, generally the profile because uh -huh. we wanted that to look beautiful and supportive or, or an integrated element, as I mentioned earlier, of the overall profile of the vehicle. But even down to the stitching, the alignment, okay. the bows, all those play into an overall impression of not only an aesthetic statement, but also communication of, of uh, integrated quality. One thing I've noticed when we had the, the top in place on the car here is you don't really see the bows that, that's the, for the top structure. It's, it's a very smooth surface on the outside. Was, was that a, Oh, a absolutely. Goal absolutely. We pay a, a lot of attention working with the engineering on those bows. Uh, there's a term called kinematics, which mm -hmm. is, refers to how all the mechanism uh, transposes or works going either up or down and how those different components nestle into one another and then how they support the, the fabric. That's, that's all uh, incredibly complex, right. but at the end of the day, when the customer looks at it, just as you, as you uh, perceived, it has to look great uh, yeah. no matter what the functionality is underneath. Another thing to notice, a difference between the convertible and the coupe that we saw earlier, Tom, and you, you happen to be standing right by the rear wheel. That inlet vet that we spent a lot of time talking about for the coupe is not there. We spoke earlier about designing the two configurations together. Mm -hmm. And one of those elements of doing a convertible is how the mechanism works, how the, the tannel goes up and down and it's tough to occupy two different functions in one area in this particular right. instance. So taking that consideration when we did the two vehicles together, we optimized uh, another course to, to route the air up and then through the coolers in the rear. And that they're, they're primarily underneath. And we optimized that configuration for the convertible specifically. If you follow the, the character line that comes along the belt line of the car, it, it curves toward the back there, which to me, still suggests the, the lines that we saw on the Stingray Coupe. There is probably as much energy on the rear deck lid and then how that flows onto the tannow. You can see some really interesting features relative to the, the headrest graphic that kind of translates into the, into the rear deck. Probably as much effort has gone into this as the whole roof of the coupe. And why is that? Because we wanted to make sure this was a functional but beautiful sculptural statement that not only looks uh, fantastic, but um, it looks very well thought out and complete. And what's special about the, the convertible probably even more so is the fact that the exterior flows into the interior to become, again, just one unified, integrated, sculptural automotive statement. And uh, I will tell you, that's one of those details that just uh, is, is timeless, that just communicates Corvette what features or technology would you love to see make its way from the Stingray to other parts of the Chevrolet lineup? I would say that I would 
hope to see some of the sculpture that was developed on this vehicle translated into other Chevrolet vehicles. Okay. Some of them, I will tell you, uh, are already uh, taking a look at that. Mm -hmm. And then working in the interior, again, the, I think the, the beautiful functionality, the, the quality, the attention to detail, uh, the screen technology, the display technology, uh, the fact that concerted effort was made to be genuine about the materials that are used. If it's aluminum, if it looks like aluminum, it is aluminum. If it, if it looks like leather, it really truly is leather. If it looks okay. like carbon fiber, it's, right. it's, 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 it's the real material. You can only take one. Do you want the Stingray Coupe or do you want the Stingray Convertible? I think uh, if I had to choose right now, I think I would probably opt for a convertible knowing that, um, you know, driving friends and family mm -hmm. and uh, just all, all that's gone into it and the statement that it makes, uh, I couldn't be any, any happier. Catch all the latest auto enthusiast news at AutoWeek.com, in AutoWeek magazine and iPad edition. Talk with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at AutoWeek USA.